Anne of Austria was whispering to her maid. Even outside the palace walls, there could have been an outbreak. The queen needed to know for certain whether her son, King Louis XIV, would be able to have children. What if he couldn't have children or proved incapable of taking on the responsibilities of marriage? Anne of Austria gave a clear mandate. She wanted to see if Louis could be alone with a woman. Madame Beauvais agreed to do the queen's bidding. She promised to be careful that the young king did not realize it was his mother's order. The matter became one of national importance. After all, even young kings didn't have a private life. Sometimes their parents chose not only their future wives, but even their first wives. When Louis XIV reached puberty, his mother decided to test her son's ability to provide the dynasty with heirs. For this test, Anne of Austria chose an unsightly maid with loose morals. Her name was Catherine Henrietta, Madame Beauvais. She was an accomplished woman, 20 years older than the king. Louis was only 14. He still shunned the fairer sex, embarrassed by their playful glances. And the ladies of the court vied for the honor of leading the king into the world of love. It would allow them to remain forever in the monarch's memory and gain certain privileges. Anne of Austria had much to worry about. Louis XIII, her husband, was an apathetic man with a completely absent libido. And it wasn't just his happy marriage, but also his ability to produce heirs. What if the son was his father's son? The Queen Mother couldn't rely on fate alone. She needed a woman of great experience, but rather unattractive in appearance, so as not to remain in Louis's heart. Catherine Henriette was born in Poitou in 1614. She grew up far from court life. Her father was a textile worker. The girl did not receive a proper education, and for her background it was not required. At the age of 20, at the behest of her father, Catherine Henriette married Pierre Beauvais, a cloth merchant who supplied fabrics to the court. One day, Catherine Henriette accompanied her husband to court. Anne of Austria was selecting fabrics for new outfits. The true queen preferred the finest and highest quality for her finely brushed skin. It was said that Anne's skin was so thin that it shone through when the queen drank wine. The queen mother liked Catherine Henrietta. She was bold with a strong character and loyal. There were no such people left at court. Although Madame Beauvais was far from the canons of court beauty, the queen mother took her as her lady-in-waiting. The aristocrats laughed at her. They called her a scarecrow and did not understand why Anne of Austria was in favor of Catherine Henriette. Catherine Henriette had a glass eye and wore a bandage all day like a pirate, and her figure was not pretty. She had neither grace nor manners. Surprisingly, contrary to the opinion of the ladies of the court, Catherine Henrietta had many extramarital affairs. Such promiscuous behavior was not condemned by the pious Anne of Austria, but used for the good of the kingdom. One morning, Madame Beauvais entered the king's bedroom. At first, the frightened Louis XIV could not understand why an ordinary maid would indulge in such behavior. It took some effort for the young king to submit to the onslaught of his mother's self-righteous maid. It is said that Louis was satisfied and took love lessons for another two years, and Anne of Austria was pleased that her son was able to give her grandchildren. Did the church and the Catholics condemn Anne's decision? They did, did, but it was considered a minor sin. The future of the dynasty was more important. For their service to the crown, the Catherine Henrietta family was rewarded with the titles of Baron and Baroness, a piece of land, and a large sum of money. On this land, Catherine Henrietta built a hotel that was named after her. An amazing career from a merchant's daughter to the first wife of the King of France. It's like a Cinderella story, only Cinderella was more like a stepmother. Despite the ridicule of the courtiers and her lack of education, Catherine Beauvais was a confidant of Anne of Austria and was granted a private audience with the king at any time. After the death of Baron Beauvais, Catherine Henrietta led a lavish lifestyle. Debts accumulated. Out of desperation, she had to put the Hotel Beauvais up for sale. However, Louis XIV, realizing the situation, bought the hotel and gave it back to his first wife. As a 70-year-old woman, Baroness Beauvais often visited Versailles. With her appearance, she caused gossip of young aristocrats. Here she is, the king's first favorite. Courtiers welcomed her into their circles and appreciated her wit. 
The Baroness could approach the king and speak to him first, ignoring the etiquette that only the king could speak first. She died in 1689 at the age of 75, surrounded by her many children and grandchildren in luxury and respect. And Louis XIV surpassed his teacher with his many love affairs. 